Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Very good. Good to see you, Tracy. It's been a while. Absolutely. It's been a it's been a real long time. I know you did a couple uh, presentations here with our team and with some of our patients. And uh, now I hear that you're doing a hundred miles soon, and uh, that's insane. Good for you. That's, that's the intention. Um, <laughs> uh, in fact, a little bit of story behind that. Just yeah. To, yeah. So I don't know what it was. Some I think it was three years ago, maybe four. And you know, I was feeling good from training, and I. So I had a good amount of fitness and a lot of miles under my belt. And I was like, maybe I'll just like do a ultra marathon, like right outside my door. Um, and thought, well, the day after Thanksgiving is this kind of, uh, conspicuous consumption day, like, right. Yeah. It's shopping. And Absolutely. I was like, yeah. how about the opposite of that? Which is yeah. like, let's just be outside moving. Yeah. And so, um, I made a little plan to run 50 miles just outside my house, you know, in different routes and had different stops at my, at different friends' houses and different people running with me. Okay. That day it was nine degrees at Um, 6am when I started, like it was this freak weather day. And, uh, so I made it about 46 miles and, um, (laughs) then I got, I was like, I'm cold. My knee hurts. Yeah. I was done. It's done. Uh, and then I had, then I wound up having, um, not long after that, I got injured. And we'll talk about that injury. Absolutely. So I'll yeah. come back to that. That's what led me to you all. Yeah. But then two, then last year, I, you know, I, I'm better. And uh, thanks to you all and, uh, and other people that have helped, like a community of people really helped me. It, and, that's what it uh, takes. It definitely yeah, takes a community right. of people. And, um, so last year, the day after Thanksgiving, I did a hundred K and I did it successfully. So a little over 62 miles. Okay. And when you think about these kind of ultra marathon distances, you have 50 miles, hundred K hundred miles seem like the next logical. The next, yeah. I asked a couple people that I know that have done a hundred miles. And like, can I do this? Do you think this is what I've been doing? They're like, yeah, yeah you could do that. Yeah. probably going to get ugly, but you could do it. Um, <laughs> and so that's the plan. So yeah, yeah that's a little yeah, story. I know it, it's, it's funny. It's just, it's just another level that you just take yourself to just like, you know, me with my triathlons, you start off with a sprint and then you go to possibly an Olympic, then a half and then a full. And then when you're training for the full, you look back at sprints and you're like, Okay. Yeah, I'll do a sprint tomorrow. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. It's so it, funny. <laughs> that's and when you think about that types of training, and you know, just to talk a little bit about the amount of running I'm doing now, yeah. um, I so I ran Boston um about a month ago, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I trained pretty hard for that. It was the first race that I've trained hard for in a while. Okay. Um, and uh, ran just over three hours. It's pretty competitive time for my age group kind of yeah. close to the top absolutely 10%. that's great um and you know and then thinking about how to train for this 100 mile like how do you train for 100 miles you know yeah run i would have to miles. look it up <laughs> <laughs> so i i mean i have the books and basically yeah. uh what i did two weeks ago i ran 50 miles breaking it up into 12 and a half mile sections yeah over two days Okay. Just to see what my body would be do yeah, with that yeah. amount of mileage and with pausing, like taking breaks. Yeah. So that was fine. And I Recovery. recovered pretty quickly. Yeah. And then Saturday, just this weekend, I did 30 miles mm-hmm. in the same day. Um, okay. So I did like 12 miles, uh, maybe 10 miles in the morning and then 20 miles in the afternoon. But it just goes back to that, like, you know, when you've done these distances and you look back mm-hmm. at, well, like, if I go nice and slow and listen to my body and do what I know how to do yeah. running 30 miles in a day, like is yeah. a thing. Yeah. And then, it's absolutely a thing. um, you know, ran today, six miles was fine. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So you, so you've been training, um, what, six miles to 10 miles a day. Is that how much you've been running lately for the, um, 
Or do you have any Boston breaks? Marathon? Yeah. So for the yeah. Boston Marathon, I did a like a pretty good 16 to eight week training cycle. Okay. Yeah. That caps out like it in the 60s, but probably averages 50 miles per week. Okay. Um, the longest run I do for that is usually about 18 miles. 18. Yeah. And I'm doing a lot of interval, tempo, long runs. Yeah. And then easy. Since then, I you know took a week off, took an easy week, and then now just at, I'm keeping things pretty light except for these two kind of longer weekends. Yeah. Between now and the day after Thanksgiving, I'll I'll probably do like six, eight miles at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. So um, you must be you know everything that you learned uh, here at Houghton and from your team of of people that you listen to and you know, even just from your own knowledge of what you do, we can get into that, uh, your chi running. Yeah. Um, so go, go back to like how you injured yourself yeah, before yeah. and now, and, and, and now that you're probably training a lot different than you used to. Yeah. And, I just, yeah, and just reflect on that. Um, cause yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure running is hard on your body. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, runners, um, really need to rest when they're supposed to. And I think that's a crucial part. And you put, you can probably elaborate for me on yeah. that. Yeah, that's a great point. So one of the things I've been thinking a lot about lately as I've been coaching runners mm -hmm. um, is a, like the tagline, make it easy. Yeah. That I think the runner, the kind of conventional or typical runner's mentality is I need to be working hard for this to count. Mm -hmm. And I'm really pushing back on that idea that Absolutely. making it easy is good. It's good for your body yeah. uh, inside and outside. And it's, and it's good for you as a person. Absolutely. And so going back to, I basically didn't follow my own advice. And so here's the story. Yeah. I've taken up this practice called chi running, which yeah. is a, you know, a, um, a way of moving that reduces the chance of injury and increases efficiency. And you mm -hmm. and I have done some together. Absolutely. And I love it. And I still have you, your words embedded in my head when I go out running. I and love so it. I'd, I'd been doing that for, let's say, about seven years, continually getting faster, being able to do more mileage, mm -hmm. doing kind of doing this ultra, doing this marathon, running this faster. And never really getting hurt. And I came off of um, a very fast marathon, did that, um, that cold attempt at a 50 mile ultra, and then went into training to break 250 in the Boston marathon. That was my intention to run a sub 250 marathon. I had done yeah. 251 twice. Okay. And I was like, I can do this. And, um, I was 46. So, um, I know mm. with this beard, I probably look up at 106, but absolutely. Um, my, no, you look great. <laughs> my, my, uh, <laughs> so, um, I'm, you know, feeling good doing all these things that, uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm right on the path. And I did a, you know, when you're trying to PR and you're getting older and you're running at those paces, you're kind of on the edge, you know, yeah. and of, I just, in, yeah, edge of injury, right? You're right. You're kind yeah. of, you're like, how close to the edge can I get without yeah. going over the edge? Yeah. Also, it's interesting. It was the first time in my kind of focused racing life mm -hmm. that I didn't have a coach. I okay. had used an online co a coach that worked with me online. In fact, uh, I'll give him a quick plug. I have the book right here. Um, the author of this book, Hanson's Marathon Method. Okay. And this is what I use with a lot of clients. Luke Humphrey was, is the guy that wrote this. He was my cool. online coach. And, and at, you know, I, I was like, I kind of learned this. I can coach myself. Well, I knew what to do in terms of training, yeah. but I wasn't listening to my, I wasn't putting it all together. And I started to have 
a little bit of Achilles tendonitis, like or pain in the Achilles tendon. Okay. And also what was happening is I made a commitment to try to coach more. So coaching is like very part-time for me, but I was like, I'm going to try to build this out a little bit and see. And so I was training for the Boston Marathon, trying to break 250 and increase the number of clients I was working with at the same time. And so I'd go for a run with a client, even though it was nice yeah. and slow yeah. in the morning. And then later or right after I do yeah. my own run. No recovery time. No yeah. recovery. So I was adding significant mileage mm -hmm. while I was adding intensity. This Achilles, Achilles tendonitis starts creeping in towards the end of the training cycle. And you know, I did exactly what I would tell everyone else not to do, which is I just kept going. Yeah. So I, so the, here's the, I guess the long story short is I did, what is that? That new Bedford half marathon that a lot of Boston marathon runners do and prep yep. for Boston. Yep. Yep. Basically by the time I got done with that run, I think I had torn the Achilles, yeah. a slight tear. Didn't know it at the time, but but the day after that, my Achilles tendon was probably two or three times the thickness that it usually is Okay. in a very specific spot. Yeah. This was a month before the marathon. So yeah. of course I'm like, oh, maybe it'll go away. Maybe it'll, it's just like got reacted. It'll go down. I didn't listen. I kept trying to kind of, I gave it a break. I came back and long story short, I wound up trying to come back really didn't pay attention to it, did the Falmouth road race. Okay. I mean, the, a lot of people the, do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, my dad lives in Falmouth, it's a big deal. And so I was excited mm -hmm. about it, but I'm running on what's not feeling great. And I'm, but I'm like, I'll test it and maybe it's okay. Okay. All the things again, you're not <laughs> supposed to do. And I, if you, if I was coaching myself, I'd say, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, so, a, just to like a couple miles left in that race, my glute started to hurt so badly. I could barely walk Not crazy. on the same side mm -hmm. of the Achilles tendon. Yeah. That triggered me to stop and get help. Yeah. So that is what happened. So basically I overtrained. Yeah. Regardless of how strong your technique is, yeah. the body's the body. Yeah. And right. I think a lot of runners do overtrain. Um, they, they, they're going for distance, distance. Um, they're out there just trying to get that extra mile in or the, they're at the, the next level. They want to go to 16. They want to go to, you know, 18 or, or more um, instead of listening to the body and going through maybe heart rate or, right. and, and, and making sure of that recovery and not yeah. doing anything at all. And, and the thing is with physical therapy too, the, the minute you do have a little bit of an injury and you can't recover and it keeps coming back each time you yeah. go out there, you really should go, go to your, you know, someone in your circle, um, that has experience, either a physical therapist or, um, you know, chiropractor or, you know, a foot specialist yeah. and see, uh, or whatever body part, you know, is, is, is ailing you. Um, cause it can come from, it can come from your back. It could be, you know, it could be any part that's a great neck. segue yeah that's right and and that's a great segue to what brought me to you all yeah because the the location of the injury was my achilles tendon yeah but that was not the cause of the injury right. right so we dealt i worked with a podiatrist who was great i'll give him a shout out dr neil feldman he has offices in westboro and uh, worcester and we did this uh what is it platelet rich plasma Mm -hmm. plasma yeah platelet rich plasma therapy they inject your own white blood cells directly into the tissue to stimulate healing nice and it takes a while i was in a boot it was it was yep. tough i remember you right and um <laughs> so then but but it was pretty clear that that achilles injury was something else was going on and right. so that is what i wanted to highlight in the work with you all and the work with Todd. And, and I want to also say it was multiple people I worked with at your office that I really felt like not only were they bringing their own expertise, it was pretty clear they were communicating with each other and it felt right. very seamless and supportive. So I just want to note that, that, um, that, that felt like different 
to me that people knew like it wasn't like I probably worked with four different people in your office at different times. Yeah. And I felt all of them enriched my experience, but also built on each other. Yeah. We, I think, um, I think the reason was because we just all wanted to kind of help you out. Yeah. Um, and you were helping us out with the chi running and, and, and you did see that, like, we all knew about, you know, your injury and, and, um, I think sometimes people want to just see one therapist, which is, that's great as well. But did you find that, having like four different brilliant minds was like you were getting something different from each it was, person it was, too because i've think, done that yeah i think it was i think we could say it was different and it had a thread of similarity which held yeah. it to be co coherent right? right it wasn't like do this then do this then do this. it was more like here's what we believe here's what we're going to work on and some different variations of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I really appreciated that. Um, and with the other thing that I, I was reflecting back about that experience, it was the first time that I was really putting together the connection between the different parts of the body from a upkeep and injury prevention point of view. I think about the different parts of the body all the time in terms of like how to move them to be efficient. Right. But I hadn't thought as much about how they connect to each other to keep you healthy and how right. one issue. And so it was really fascinating. Like we diagnosed pretty quickly that one side of my body was very underdeveloped compared to the other side. Yeah. And of course it was the side that got injured. Right, and right. there was this whole kind of posterior chain going on yeah. and identifying that, of course we did, I, this is what I was thinking, Tracy, like we did, I learned a bunch of exercises to build the strength on that side of my body. And that yeah. was helpful. And also maybe equally as helpful was just the knowledge of what was happening that I could bring into my activity and say, oh, that's going on. Like I can pay attention to that now in a way that I couldn't before I had that awareness. And I would never have had that awareness. No one, I've been to a lot of people. I mean, I've been a coach. <laughs> I've been, you know, I've worked with chiropractors and uh, masseuse and, um, and other physical therapists. And no one's ever said, you see that? And so that was really important to have happen. So thank oh, you. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the compliment. And I, I think that is what kind of makes us stand out because I do hear that from um, a lot of people that that we, we've we've found something that's not even connected. Well, it's connected to their injury, but we end up finding that they actually have a weakness somewhere else, and which yeah, is causing right. that. That's right. And and um, yeah, and it, it just helps so many people. Um, so with that said, I want to, um, I want to ask you, um, what are some of the things that you use every day that um, you've learned from us that now you're kind of keeping in mind um, going forward? Because now you're doing 100 miles. Yeah, I, I think it's three things. Yeah. Um, one is that it's important to... I, I think I, Todd was the first one that said this to me. And of course, it's just like probably so true. Um, right exercise, wrong time. Like, <laughs> meaning I've been much more thoughtful about not trying to rush into exercises that I'm not ready for. And right. I've, you know, worked with other people that have been like, you should do this and this. And, I, and I'm like, oh, that sounds fun and exciting. And then I'm, then realizing, no, my body's actually not ready for that. Right. That seems like a great exercise, but it's not ready for that. So I think what I've learned is do the exercises that are small, that focus on a specific body part, and that feel that aren't overworking, kind of getting back to this, like it doesn't have to be hard to be right. effective. Um, right. so that's something. So I, you know, even simple like one-legged glute bridges. And just doing a set or two to activate the glute, not to try to do, you know, uh, what is it? 
one-legged or uh, single-legged deadlifts with tons of weight. Like, I don't, that's not what I need. Right. Uh, so do what you need. So that, that was really important. Um, and what I guess I'm also bringing in is because I have, as I mentioned, this new awareness of my body, of what's, you know, my body's my body. Like it can't escape what my body actually is like. I'm aware of that when I'm moving Mm -hmm. and I incorporate that into my chi running technique. And I think as someone that's learned a bit about chi running, chi running allows you a bit more of a body sensing, a bit more of awareness of what's happening in your body. So I combine this chi running body sensing with knowing that I have a bit of an asymmetry and I can help my body work correctly instead of Right. compensating too much. Right. Yeah. And I, I think that has a lot to do with, you know, people thinking that they do need to build up their glutes or build or their cow, oh, they have sore calves afterwards, or, you know, what is their, you know, strike, but it's really, it's a lot of it is just coming right from their, their core or their, if their hips are weak, then maybe they'll get low back pain. Or if, you know, they have, ankle pain, it might be because they're not activating their, their glutes. Um, but it is, it's, and you need to concentrate and it, it takes, like, it takes a, a little while of training because it's, it's mental and physical and there's a lot, and you have to start from, from doing the simplest little things. Sometimes, I mean, I know I hear them all the time out there, just breathing, just doing well, that core, that core breathing. Right. Yeah. And I think that was another thing I've Around the same time I started working with you all, and I think there were think uh, it was a message I was hearing from you all and others I was connected with was being more thoughtful about breathing, breathing in more deeper, really feeling that uh, deep breath into the back, into the the lower abdomen, and I did some research and some work around breathing that I brought into my running too. Um, and I think that was really stimulated by coming to the office as well. Yeah. So awesome. uh, definitely got me thinking. I was like, of course. Like, again, what might seem obvious, I know, yeah. but in retrospect, <laughs> right? Then you're like, when someone shows you and, and points out, you think you're breathing deep. Yeah. But actually, let me put my hand here and yeah. see if we can feel you breathing into my hand. And you realize, oh, no, I'm not. So yep. that was very helpful for yeah, sure. Absolutely. So now, now you're, you're feeling good. You've been, yep. you're, you're feeling injury free. You're feeling good. You're out there practicing and, and, and now you, so tell me about this challenge. Give me a little yeah. bit of insight about sure. what you're going to do. Yeah. So in my real job, <laughs> uh, <laughs> other than running coaching, um, I had the, the, really the honor to work with a, with a person who has been a mindfulness director at a school in Massachusetts for many years, um, basically offering mindfulness practices to the school community, to staff, students, and parents to help support that community. Absolutely. We started a nonprofit organization to replicate that model of having a mindfulness director in every school. So imagine, you know, in every school, we have a principal, we have a gym teacher, we have social workers. Our vision is what if we had someone in every school that supported kind of the mental and emotional health through mindfulness um, and uh, mindful engagement, mindful attention, mindful awareness, a meditation. And um, we have six people in schools around the country right now. And we're hoping to have 10 more this fall, this coming fall. So we're new, but growing. And uh, we're, I don't know if you're aware, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving is called Giving Tuesday. It's a national, it's where nonprofits kind of make a national pitch like, hey, if you haven't made your donations for the year, all the nonprofits kind of say at the same time, hey, Give on Tuesday. Yep. It's weird. Something like over 10% of charitable giving is done in the last three days of the calendar year. 
Oh, yeah. So people wait to the end of the year and then realize, oh, we need to make our donations. And yeah. So in any case, we are doing Giving Tuesday, our organization, which is called Whole School Mindfulness. And I decided to link this run that I was going to do to yeah. that um, fundraiser. So I am attempting, I've set the ambitious goal of running 100 miles, and I've set the ambitious goal of raising $100,000. Honestly, I've never done either one. So I'm going to see <laughs> how it goes. But um, that, uh, that money raised will go directly to our nonprofit that's serving school communities through mindfulness. Awesome. And um, I'll make sure that the link is in the video, in our, um, in our um, instruction section. Um, right. of of youtube and it will be on in that um, so everyone can go in there and um, donate if they if they want and i think it's yep. such a great idea um i love that mindfulness because um well we're in the position where um we're always saying try pt before you know any type of medications and i think it's the same thing with mindfulness where um the, the world is just kind of really crazy and we're running around too busy and being able to meditate or having the tools and learning how to, you know, have different thought processes to help with instead of, you know, instead of, you know, being that for, I know, you know, medications are very important, uh, you know, but at the same time, um, let's try some other things, you know, and, and I, I think mindfulness is, is going to be, a, a, I love the fact that you're doing that. I love that idea. Thank you. Yeah. I, and I'll just leave you with this. It was connecting the dots. I think the approach you all take is to address the needs of the whole person, you know, right. looking at what's really going on fundamentally and systemically. And I think something like mindfulness is a similar type of approach of we're not just going to treat the symptom. Um, we're going to look at what's going on in the whole system. Right. And becoming aware of everything so that we can um, address the needs of the full system, not just that one little thing. So right. yeah, everything's see a lot of connected. Connection. Even it's, everything's connected. That's yep, right. Even with the right. thought process. That's right. That's, yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, I think um, I, I really appreciate you joining me today. I think we went over a lot and. Um, I'll let, tell the audience to definitely um, connect with you and donate to your cause. And <laughs> good luck with your 100 miles. Oh Thank my you. God. Are you videoing it or anything? Or? I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, okay. uh, I think my sister is the uh, kind of the social media specialist. So maybe we'll do some like FaceTime live or something like that. I'm, I'm not stressing about it too much, meaning like, I know my route generally. I'm going to yeah. use my home as a home base. And yeah. I'm not, I, I'm holding it like, this is a mindfulness thing. Like I've learned, yeah. even as an athlete, you can have a goal and hold it lightly. Right. right. And so that's what I'm doing. Like I yeah. have the really strong intention, but I'm also like not getting so wrapped up in it. Yeah, I think that's key. And I think that helps with with injuries as well, where hold it lightly. Yeah. If you don't do yeah. it today, then you, it's not meant to be. Do it tomorrow yeah. or the next right. day or next time. Right. You know, it's still a goal. You can still do it. Right. You know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, so, yeah. Well, thanks so much. And um, so one takeaway, um, if you were to, you know, sum up uh, your, your um, advice to anyone that's out there running and, yeah. you know, has – big goals like you, yeah. you know, what would you say? What would you say to them? I guess a couple things, you know, one is I'll go back to this, make it easy, meaning find ways yeah. to enjoy and make it easy. And, and then I, you know, from my own experiences, if we approach things like running with the mindset that it's about grit and pushing through, you ultimately will push too hard. Yeah. And you will have to stop. And in retrospect, if I had paid attention to what was going on and come to you all at that point, hey, something's not feeling quite right. Can we work on this? I would have identified the fundamental issue, been able yeah. to work on that and address it, 
and given myself the space to, um, which ultimately I was forced to do, to really recover and then come back in the yeah. way that makes most sense. And so that's what I would say is make it yeah. easy and listen to your body and get help early. Yeah. Don't early. wait for it to Don't become <laughs> a big issue. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. In the big picture, that's what builds success. Yeah, absolutely. So nice seeing you again. Yeah, I hope I hope too. we can connect again. And I know you're always doing the chi running um, uh, training. So yep. I'll also put some of that information in oh, that'd be great. Um, our section where um, they can look up for your link and they can look up some chi running if they're interested in that. And um, I will see you soon. Yeah. Tell everyone I said hi and, and yeah. thank you. And then I'm doing great. And I appreciate I appreciate you. I appreciate you, your, the yeah. team. Uh, I will. Absolutely. Bye. Take care, Tracy. Bye.